So we reviewed a little bit about the SAPR program. We defined sexual assault and consent. Now let's talk about the different reporting options when somebody is sexually assaulted. The two direct report options for airmen when they come to speak to the SARC or a victim advocate and sign the official DD Form 2910 are res a restricted report. It's confidential and it's not investigated. The victim remains anonymous to anyone outside the SAPR program and is protected by privileged communication. Or you can file an unrestricted report and this option is investigated and command authorities are notified. So let's highlight the confidentiality within the SAPR program. As stated previously, SAPR personnel, including the SARC and victim advocates, we have an obligation to protect the confidentiality of communications with the victim. This is true for both restricted and unrestricted reports. When unrestricted notifications occur, only individuals with an official need to know will be privy to any of the knowledge of that incident. Certain disclosures of confidential communication may be required by law or regulation. There are some specific exceptions to confidentiality of a restricted report, and these are always reviewed with the victim upon signing the DD Form 2910. The victim provides written authorization. If there is a need to break confidentiality to prevent or lessen a serious and imminent threat to someone's health or safety, officials that are participating in the disability evaluation system and medical evaluation boards, and when required by law. So who is eligible to fire the, file these restricted reports and unrestricted reports? Good question. So active duty, guard, reserve, military dependents over the age of 18, and DOD civilians are all eligible for both restricted and unrestricted reports. Keep in mind that contractor personnel are only eligible for unrestricted reports. It's important to seek help from a trusted source, and the SAPR personnel are available just for that. You can also discuss your sexual assault with the DPH, the chaplain, with a medical provider, and, and that those are all safe options. However, they cannot take an official report, but they do work very closely with the SARC. The following people you may trust and be inclined to talk to about your sexual assault, but keep in mind that the people in these positions are mandatory reporters for sexual assault and you might lose your option to have a restricted report. These include commanders, anyone in your chain of command, meaning supervisors, supervisory chain, and first sergeants, Air Force instructors, except for U.S. Air Force Academy instructors, and law enforcement. If you decide to report your sexual assault with someone before coming to the SAPR office, you can report to a commander outside your chain of command, your next senior commanding officer, if the commander is the alleged subject. The inspector general, or the DOD Safe Helpline. These will remain unrestricted reports, however. These entities will help facilitate filing a report with a SAPR office. Keep in mind that if other people know about the sexual assault and somehow this information gets back to the commander, that commander must immediately report the matter to officials and an investigation may be initiated based on that independently acquired information. That's what's called an independent investigation. So victims who previously made a restricted report can maintain that restricted report if an in independent investigation happens. So the report, you can elect to not participate in the investigation though. If the SARC is notified of an independent investigation and the victim has not signed a DD Form 2910 electing a restricted report, the SARC must inform the victim that the option to file a restricted report is no longer available. There are a few occasions where people are confused on who handles these cases. First, sexual assault that occurs between intimate, married, or dating partners, or when the victim is below the age of 18, are to be reported to the Director of Psychological Health unless you are on active duties. These are reported to the Family Advocacy Program called FAP. The SAPR program does not handle these cases, but will assist in making the appropriate referrals. Second is sexual harassment. This is not the same as sexual assault, but it is along the same continuum of harm, and it's often a precursor for a sexual assault. So let's look at what sexual harassment involves. It's unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature that unreasonably interferes with an individual's work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. These complaints can be reported to the Equal Opportunity Office or command and your SARC can help facilitate these referrals. Sexual harassment may be prosecuted civilly or criminally.